But we thank God for tomorrow. Tomorrow we will commemorate our Lord's death and burial. And we thank God for Sunday morning when we will celebrate his resurrection. Anybody grateful to God for the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? Everything that he said to us was dependent on his resurrection. If he did not rise up from the dead, everything that he said before the cross would have been just empty words. But we thank God for the cross this morning. Hallelujah. He said, no man can take my life for me. I have the power to lay down and I have the power to pick it up. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. Oh, we give you praise. We give you praise. So welcome to church whether you're here this morning or you're tuned in online. We pray that the presence of the living God will fall in this place today. We pray that there will be a manifestation of the resurrection power of Christ. Hallelujah, we believe in God for miracles and signs and wonders, breakthroughs, answers to prayer, healing and deliverance. Amen, church. Thank you, Lord. Your, Your only Son, no yes. Hallelujah. Ah, we bless you this morning, Lord. 
You are the Lamb of God who taketh away the sins of the world. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for the cross. Lord, we thank you for the cross this morning. Lord, we thank you for the nail pierced hands bearing all our sin and shame. In love you came and gave amazing grace. Ah, we are the redeemed of the Lord this morning and we say so. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Ah, my God, my God, we thank you for your great love. Hallelujah, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Lord, we thank you for the gift of everlasting life. Lord, we thank you that we are the redeemed of the Lord this morning. Ah, we give you praise. We have been washed in the blood of Jesus. Our names are written in heaven in the Lamb's book of life. Ah, my God, we give you praise. Lord, we thank you that you said in your word, we didn't choose you, Lord, you chose us. And we are so grateful and we are so thankful. Hallelujah for the day you chose us. The day you redeemed our lives from destruction. The day you brought us out of darkness into your marvelous light. Ah, my God, so we bless you this morning. Hallelujah, Lord, bless the service today. Lord, we pray for your rich presence. Lord, we pray for your rich anointing. Lord, bless the service tomorrow morning. My God, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Lord, bless the service on Sunday morning in the name of the Lord Jesus. Lord, we are believing you for souls. Lord, we are believing you for souls. You died on that cross to save us from our sins. Ah, you are the Lamb of God who take away the sins of the world. So, Lord, we bless you this morning. Lord, we bless you. Lord, we bless you. Lord, we bless you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. One of the things that we will do this morning is we will have you come down to present to the ministers, the reverends. We will be standing up front in a short while and we will receive your pledge card. The man of God was encouraging us to go before the Lord and to seek God for guidance and for direction. What he would have you to do as far as missions is concerned. This is Missions Month. All five weeks of March was de designated to missions. And we have heard a lot of things said from the servants of God, from the bishop and from his son. And today, because some of you would not be able to come to church perhaps on Sunday morning, we have invited you to come today so that you could present to the Lord your pledge card. Some of you, I understand, I'm hearing that some of you would have walked with your monies to put into the car that's all right we will receive it and we will bless you and pray over it so that is what we're going to do this morning but before we invite you to do that i want to show you how important it is to give to the lord we have heard that the church does not have a financial need god bless this church from day one and he has prospered this church and he has blessed this ministry over the past 40 years. We are in our 41st year and everything that we see here, this building, everything that we see before our eyes is because of the goodness of the Lord. Amen, church. We thank God for this church. We thank God for this great ministry. We thank God for our bishop and the first lady, the founders of this church and this ministry. And they have laid a wonderful platform for us. And they are a living example of what it means to give unto the Lord. He would have stood behind that holy desk and would have said to us over and over that you don't pray your way out of poverty. You give your way out of poverty. Amen. God's word is very clear. He has given us seed to sow and he has given us bread to eat. So what you're coming to do this morning is sow your seed. And we will be praying for you, whatever you are believing God for. We are praying that there will be a manifestation of the power of God. The bishop said he is believing God. Uh, because of what we have done this month and what we will do today and on Sunday morning, receiving your pledge cards and praying for you, we are believing God that this will be not only a new beginning for this church, a new era for this church, but a new era for every one of you. 
whether it be in your health, in your home, in your marriage, in your finances, in the lives of your children. Can I have an amen this morning, church? So we don't want you to just come and drop something in the bag. The man of God taught us over and over everything that we do before the Lord. We must do it before the Lord. We must do it, how church? Before the Lord and unto the Lord. Everything that we do in the church must be done as a part of our worship to our God. Amen? So we want to look in the Word for a few minutes. Turn with me in your Bibles to Philippians chapter 4. This is the Apostle Paul speaking to the church, the believers at Philippi. And he is thanking them for their support for him in the ministry. The Apostle Paul was called to be a missionary to the then world, but he was not able to go on his own. He had to receive support from the people of God. And he's writing back to them, and we want to look at what he said. Let's pick it up from verse 10. Let's read the word of God together. Are you all there? Amen, church. Are you all there? But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at the last your care of me had flourished again wearing you were all so careful but you lacked opportunity not that I speak in respect of want for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to, content, to be content. So the Apostle Paul right up front here is saying to them, this is not about wanting your money. He said, I know how to abound and I know how to be abased. He's saying what you're doing here is for the furtherance of the kingdom of our God. Verse 13, I can do all things through Christ which strengthened me. Notwithstanding, you have well done that you did communicate with my affliction. Now you Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me concerning giving and receiving. So he is thanking them for the support that they give to him because he did not get much support from other churches and he is writing to them and he is thanking them for their support for him let's read that again now you philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel when i departed from macedonia no church communicated with me concerning giving and receiving but you only for even in Thessalonica, you sent once and again unto my necessity. Not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. And that is so very important. You know, sometimes some people, when they're giving to the church, they see it as money given to the church, to the pastor, to the leadership. Not so not so we must go beyond that we have heard that everything that we have came from the Lord we are only stewards all the gifts all the talents all the abilities that we have came from God and even though he gave it to us for us to enjoy here on the earth but he also gave it to us for his glory amen and we have heard that voice uh, that verse where we read, freely you have received, freely give. We have a responsibility. Our bishop is grateful, he and the first lady. They are forever grateful to the missionaries that came to them many, many, many decades ago. But even though the missionaries came here, somebody had to support them. They needed financial support. They're in a strange land. But they needed to know that they had the backing of the home church there in the United States. They needed that money to pay their rent, their bills, to buy food. 
And that is what missionaries depend on. They depend on the support of the church, the backing of the church, the prayers of the church. That is where we come in. Some people during this month would hear the voice of God. Even though we are receiving pledges today, pledge cards today and Sunday, we are believing God that people will hear the voice of God. Some people will be hearing and they will be saying, Lord, here am I, send me. God may be speaking to some of you about missions. He may not be calling you to go out into the international arena, but he may be calling you right here to be an evangelist, to be a missionary right here in Trinidad, perhaps the Caribbean. Some people might be called to go into the world. And when you leave your home, when you leave your job to fulfill the will of God, you must know that you do not have only the prayer support of the church, but you have the financial support of the church. The Bible says money answereth all things. Without money, we cannot do anything. All that we are able to do through this church over the past 40 years into our 41st years is because of the support of the people here at home. So he is saying to them, I don't want you to give and think it's going to me. It's not going to me. He said, I know how to abound and I know how to be abased. So this, is what, this was not about him. He says in verse 17, not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. Oh my God. How many of you are thankful that God is looking? God is watching. God is a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. But I have all. Here's what he said about their giving. But I have all and abound. I am full, having received of Epaphroditus the things which were sent from you, an odor of a sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well-pleasing to who, church? Well, pleasing to God. What you're going to do in a little while, what you're going to do some, on Sunday morning is not between anybody else. It's between you and God. That's why our bishop said, go before the Lord. Don't hurriedly turn in the card. Pray about it. Lord, show me what you want me to give, whether it be weekly or monthly or one time. Bible says in all our ways we are to acknowledge him amen church and he said I will direct your path and then he said this to them let's read it verse 19 but my God my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus God is your water, church. Whatever you believe in God for, as you make your pledge, as you put that card in the bag, and the ministers pray for you, we are believing for a manifestation of the power of God, that you will experience miracles, signs, wonders, breakthroughs, answers to prayer, every area of your lives. That is what he is saying. But my God, my God, the one who gave you everything, the breath you have in your nostrils this morning is from him. You and I are alive this morning because he willed it to be so. And we are here to give him praise and to give him thanks. Amen, church. So when you come, those of you who are coming to present your pledge cards, don't come wishing you didn't have to do it. Wishing it could have been something else. The Bible says God loves a cheerful giver. Now, a pledge is something you don't have. Eh? A pledge is something you hope to receive. This is by faith. When you write that figure there, you are saying to God, God, I don't have this, but I am writing this in faith, believing you 
that you will put that money in my hand and I will be able to support missionaries around the world here in Trinidad and the, the ministries that we support. And trust me, God is going to put that money in your hand. The Bible says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Hallelujah. All the silver belong to him. All the gold belong to him. The cattle on a thousand hills belongs to our God. Amen, church. So don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. This is between you and God. This is what I'm going to do for Ada. This is what I believe that you put in my heart to do for the next 12 months. And by the grace of God, I am going to believe you that you're not just going to put that money in my hand, but like the Apostle Paul said, but my God shall supply all your need according to the riches of his glory. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You all would have looked at your card. You all would have seen there on the left-hand side some of the missionary work that we are supporting. Samaritan's Purse, Isaiah Project, Bishop Jacob there in India, Kurapong in Guyana, International Gospel Center in Curacao. We have our outreaches here in Trinidad and other local ministries. So get ready. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I'm going to call upon my colleagues, my fellow ministers, to spread yourselves around. All right, Bishop is coming to say something before we do that. So great job, Brother Angus. Give him a hand of appreciation. Hardly gets any better than that. Hardly. What a man, what an anointing, what a breaking of the word. But just in case there is anybody who isn't quite aware of what we are doing, let me make sure everybody's on board. What we are doing this morning is what we will do again on Sunday morning, Easter Sunday. This is what we will do, but because we have people. And a lot of people who don't come on Sunday, we are doing that for you this morning. So if you are both a Thursday morning and a Sunday morning person, forgive us. It's not that we're repeating it. It's just that we wanted to give the Thursday morning crowd an opportunity to be a part of what the Lord is saying to us. As a church, we believe the Lord is instructing us to do more than we have ever done before in terms of obeying the Great Commission. Like Brother Angus said, the truth is we would not be here this morning if some 50, 60 years ago, missionaries left the luxury of living in the greatest country in the world and coming to Trinidad. My wife and I were a part of that. So we understand that better than anybody else does. We know that God is sovereign and he could do anything he wants, but we do not think it would have happened if those people didn't make a sacrifice. And we are not telling you something we read in history. This is something we have experienced firsthand. And now, in the twilight years of our life, my wife and I are very, very, very proud and grateful for the opportunity to pass on this vision to our son and to the other ministers in this church so that when we have fallen asleep and gone to heaven, this vision never dies. I believe that this weekend is going to mark a new beginning of blessing upon this church, hear me carefully, greater than anything we have seen before because of the obedience that this church is practicing today and Sunday. I believe we are entering into a new era that more people will get saved in the future than 
ever before. More miracles, more healings, more deliverance. Whatever we've seen in the past is going to look small compared to what this church is coming to in the next few years. I'm not saying that to get your money. I don't want your money. I don't need your money. This thing is far, far, far bigger than money. This is hearing God's voice and obeying God. Secondly, I want to ask you, what do you think God wants to do in this service this morning? Repeat. Because I don't want you to get into the aisle, give a card, take a prayer, and go back home. That could be just tradition. That could be just form. Reset. I'm talking to you as individuals this morning. And by the way, thank you for being here. What do you think God wants to do in this service this morning? Because it's according to what you expect to happen, will happen. If you expect nothing, then nothing will happen. Sometimes God singles out one person to bless. Are you that person? The Bible says that Jesus stopped in Samaria, which was the poorest, the lowest, the slums, Samaritans. And the Bible says he went there because there was one woman. He wanted to change her life. Is that you? Then Jesus said in John chapter 4, and it's not repeated in Matthew, Mark, or John, or in Luke chapter 4, Jesus said, there were many widows suffering in the time of Elijah, many. But the prophet was sent to one woman. Is that you? And Jesus said there were many people dying from leprosy in the days of Naaman. And Elisha was sent to one woman, one man. Is today your day? Are you this person today that God's going to do something in your life that will change you forever? Are you? Or should they're doing a great job? Please help. Do a great job. Especially when I'm speaking because I'm easily distracted. So you're going to come this morning for prayer. If you don't want to, that's fine. It's voluntary. Especially if you're a visitor here this morning and you just want to sit down and enjoy the service, we have no problem with that. If you came out of curiosity and leave, great. If you came to criticize and leave, great. That's all right. But if you are a person and God's will is to touch your life today, my brother Anger said, maybe even call you to a ministry and call you to make an important decision. Then this service is for you. Now, if God is going to do for you what he wants to do, it will not happen without your cooperation. God does nothing for anybody without their cooperation. What is the part that you have to play? Jesus answered it in John chapter 15, verse 7. Please bring it up as we prepare to pray. John chapter 15 and verse 7. This is the night before he died. Jesus never minced words, much more the night before he dies. And he said, if 
He was talking to the disciples. He was talking to his church. And by extension, talking to Faith Center in March 2024. And he's talking to you. And he's talking to me. God loves me. God has a great plan for me. God wants to bless me. God wants me to finish my course with joy. Jesus paid with his life that I might have abundant life. But there is an if. There is a if. The ball is not in his court. He went to the cross and he gave his life. And when his body was in the tomb, he went down to hell to let hell know what has just happened. And then he seated at the right hand of the Father this morning praying for us but now it's up to us and he said if you abide in me that's your part that's my part if you abide in me how do you do that how you abide in Jesus by being connected with him and staying connected with him. He doesn't come into your life and then leave. He's not here for two hours on Thursday morning or two hours on Sunday morning. That's not abiding, that's visiting. Abiding. I am in you, you are in me. We are in constant fellowship, we are inseparable. We are inseparable. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, how are his words going to get into us? One way and one only. Study it. Read it. Meditate on it. Let it not depart out of your mouth. You might say that's not practical. Of course it is. I am not sitting down with my Bible every day for hours. Maybe I should. I'm still, but when my Bible is closed and I'm gone my way, the word is in my mind and in my heart. I wake up in the morning and the Holy Spirit reminds me and sometimes I'm driving on the highway and he speaks a word to me. I will pull off the highway on the shoulder. I'm old school. I don't have the, the gadgets and so on. And I will write what he said. Stick it in my pocket so when I go home, I could meditate on it. I live that way all the time. It is not a connect and disconnect. Connect and disconnect. It's abiding. The living Christ never leaves us. We never leave him. He not only flavors every area of our life, he's in control of every area of your life. Your sex life, your business life, your financial life, your personal life, your social life. He is out of nothing. He's in your marriage. He's in your family. He's in your ministry. He is the Lord of all. That's how he wants. And in case you don't know, it's a life of joy unspeakable and full of glory. I came to church this morning and I wrote down in my journal as I do every day, most days, that I am supposed to be experiencing great peace all the time. I am not supposed to worry about anything. I am not supposed to have any fear. I am not supposed to have any anxiety. Why? Not because I'm not living in the real world. You bet. I'm a father. 
I'm a husband, I'm a grandfather, I'm a great-grandfather, I'm a father-in-law. I have a great church that I'm a part of. So I have all kinds of kids, but I am supposed to be experiencing great peace. Nothing missing, nothing broken. Why? Because I love God's word. Put it up. Put it up. Uh, Psalm 119, 165. Psalm 119, 165. Put it up, please. Psalm 119, 165. Psalm 119, 165. Put it up, please. Great peace have they which love thy law and nothing shall offend them. I love the law. I love this book more than anybody else except Peter Narenzi. I love God's word. I love God's word with a love I cannot describe. I love God's word more than I love anything else in the world. It's an amazing love. I can't live without this. This thing has done too much for me for too long. And because of that, I should be experiencing great peace every day. Because it is written. Great peace. No lack. No breakage. No hurt. I will have them. But there is a great peace that is promised me and I live there 24-7 because I love God's word. I wrote that down in my journal this morning. And you know why? Because I was a fool for so many years to be a victim of worry and anxiety and fear and insecurity and hurt from my upbringing and the struggles of life. And I have them as you do. But I was a fool to let those things keep me from experiencing great peace all the time. But I didn't know how. Now that I'm ready to leave this world, I'm now learning it. So I wrote in my journal a few weeks ago, my biggest regret is that it took me so long to learn God's ways and to learn God's word. That's why I want to be like Acts 20, 24. I want to finish my course with joy. And anytime Satan threatens that, I want to know how to overcome that so we close as we have prayer back to John 15 7 please Nicole and thank you again read it with me please everybody John 15 7 if you abide in me and my words abide in you you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you sometimes it happens instantly sometimes it happens progressively but it always happens conditionally Repeat, God answers our prayers, some instantly, some progressively, it's a process, it takes weeks, months, years, sometimes it takes decades for God to change your life and make you the husband you ought to be, decades, because we're stubborn, we're rebellious. Sometimes it takes him years to make you the woman he designed you to be. If ye abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for anything. That's the power of prayer.
So when you come to the altar this morning, please try to come with that understanding. And remember, you don't have to come. It's how God is moving in your heart. If you ask anything, one of the ministers recently gave a great illustration. Solomon offered a thousand bulls to God. One would have been enough. Five, my son, I think, did it on Sunday morning. Another great message. Five bulls would have been generous. Ten bulls would have been exorbitant. A hundred bulls would have been more than extra. Solomon gave God a thousand bulls in one offering. The man was crazy. But the Bible says in the next verse, that night, God said, Solomon, ask for anything. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Can a man in today's covenant get to that place? Or is God a respecter of persons? Solomon, ask for anything. Jesus is saying to us this morning, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask. You shall ask. Prayer can't be a ritual anymore, you know. Prayer can't be gentle, Jesus, meek and mild. No, I lay me down to sleep. A hurried our Father which art in heaven. No, no, prayer is too powerful. Prayer is too great. Prayer is too strong a privilege for the church not to use it. I thank God for all the prayer groups in this church and all the intercessors. If you have not yet done it, I want to invite you. There is a card in front of you. We make sure that all the chairs are being always furnished. You don't have to. You don't have to. It's up to you. There's a card in front of you. I want to invite you to fill it out. If you need a pen or a pencil, somebody will help you or the church staff will help you. If you would rather bring it back on Sunday morning, we'll do it Sunday morning. But we are doing it today. We will not do it next Thursday. We will not do it again. This is Thursday and Sunday morning. And it says, My missions give to the world, covering the earth with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Jesus said, Freely you have received, now freely give, name, address, amount, date, online giving, etc., etc. And my brother Angus beautifully did. He read the card. On top, it's a Samaritan's purse. Last year alone, our church, by the grace of God, was able to send 80,000 U.S. dollars to Samaritan's purse only. That's half a million in one year. Two days ago, I got a letter on my desk from the head of Samaritan's purse, Franklin Graham, the son of Billy Graham. The first thing we look at before we support a ministry is integrity. Because a lot of people receive money and we don't feel like they spend it the way God wants them to spend it, so we don't invest in that. Many, many requests come. We can't give to everybody. We're not supposed to give to everybody. But we give to Samaritan Spurs. And two days ago, I got another letter from Franklin Graham, of course, to me personally. He was writing to all his supporters all over the world. And he said this, Thank you, Faith Center Trinidad, for helping us to help people, listen to this, in 110 countries. 
far as I know, there are about 220, 30 countries in the world. So 110 countries is half the world. One ministry is involved in 110 countries. So when we send half a million dollars, TT, to this ministry, in our hearts we know it might be just a drop in the bucket, but Little Faith Center in Little Trinidad is touching 110 countries. Wow. So thankful to God for the opportunity. We don't have to go. And yet we can be a part of it. And that's the first listed here. 110 countries. Isaiah Project is what we do every year here. We distribute hampers. Each hamper is 100,000. We try to do two or three every year. We've done that for years. So we are feeding the hungry right here. We do it every year. We'll do it again in the next year. Number three, Bishop Jacob in India. We have sent more to India than we have sent to Samaritan's Purse. Because my wife and I have been there. Lepers, widows, orphans, street people like Samaria, the lowest in the totem pole. And that man is doing a phenomenal job. We support them. You support them. Number four, Kurupong, Guyana. It just so happened. And I don't know if you believe me or not. I hope you believe me because if you don't believe me, you have no confidence in me. But just like this past week, I got a letter from Samaritan's Purse. The secretary put another note on my desk this past week from Kurupong where the pastor died. His son has just succeeded him. And the son has just written a letter to Faith Center thanking us for helping the church in Kurupong, which is a far remote part of Guyana. You could only get there by boat. They are tribal people, barely literate. Nobody goes there. But our own sister Liz Shand, more than once, has let a team from this church gone in there, pioneer the work, and he said, I hope he's right. He said thousands of people have been touched and hundreds of lives have been, have, been, have been affected. And we have even built a little church there and supporting them. We have done it for years. We'll continue to do it. So it's 110 countries to Samaritan Spurs. It is Isaiah Project all over TNT. It is Kurupungayana International Gospel Center. That's my friend and my brother, Carlos Williams. You know him, a Trinidadian boy, pioneering a work in Curacao. Last year, I think we sent six times five, 30,000 US dollars because they are struggling to finish their church. And he is getting old and I wanted to help him before he leaves. So we sent 30,000 US dollars last year. That's what we have been doing. For outreaches, I told the church last Sunday, the rent alone for Arima, Williamsville, Faisabad, Deby, over the last four or five years, one and a half million dollars that you have paid to rent those churches so that Faith Center could have a presence there and doing all we can to reap the harvest and represent the Lord Jesus Christ and other local ministries. There are many, many more. This is what we have done. This is what we are aspiring to do and to a larger extent. And that is what we are inviting you to be a part of. So let's pray, please. Really.
freely you have received freely freely give go in my name and because you believe others will know that i live lord this is what you said we didn't write this we didn't fabricate this this it just didn't come out of a meeting of a board meeting you said that in matthew chapter 10 verse 8 and because we have received so much from you no you are exhorting us to give and lord thank you that you have said the more we give the more we receive if we sow sparingly we receive sparingly if we give extravagantly like we heard on sunday morning we receive extravagantly it's all up to us it's all up to us whatsoever a man sows that shall he reap lord thank you for giving this church the opportunity small as we are little t and t not even one and a half million people and yet you've blessed us with the privilege of representing you in countries all over the world we have not even mentioned china we've invested there we have not even mentioned ukraine we invested there before the war thank you lord when the earthquake hit dominica we went in there we've gone into haiti many 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 times thank you for the privilege we believe lord is part of the reason that your blessing is upon this church bless john mark bless the leadership of this church may they always hear your voice may they always obey you that's the secret of living a life of blessing we thank you lord we pray in jesus name amen all right the ministers who are praying they know who they are will come now and take their places here in the altar they know this and they have been praying some of them have been fasting they have been preparing themselves the ushers are coming because they have instructions to thanks ushers thanks ministers yes wherever we have somebody like her that needs help let them come first we all always do that where there is a needy person an old person a slow person and people with babies don't let them suffer in the line not today not sunday no time no time no time that is the right thing to do they can't stand up in a line all right so here is here here is the game plan if you filled out your card and you're ready if you haven't yet and you want one take time and do it If you want to do it, if you don't want to do it, you want to leave Sunday <laughs> between you and the Lord. Yeah. Uh um, I do think my wife and I have yet filled out a form. We usually wait for last minute. But we know the joy of giving, so we don't hesitate to toll at all at all at all. Yeah. So you come now And, and please 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 nobody tell anybody we telling people they could buy God's blessing you can't buy God's blessing 
You can't bribe God. You can't, you can't give God anything that he doesn't already have. So you fill it out, and then uh, no particular order. Go to any minister, and uh, they will receive your card. They will pray over you. And then depending on what time we have left, the service will conclude. But this is not a regular service. It's not a regular mountain movers, as you understand now. And I imagine we follow very much the same pattern on Sunday morning. Thank you, and God bless you richly. Freely, Feel free to come. Turn, hold on. You ready for hold on? We need to hear the past senior pastor's voice. He has a gift for you all. Hold on. Thank you, Bishop. We have a little token, a reminder token. After you've presented your cards, the ushers have it. To my left, your right, it's a little bracelet that you can wear. Just to remind you of your commitment and our appreciation to you for supporting the work of the Lord. All right. So in addition to leaving your card, collect a bracelet as a reminder. And remember now, remember, it's prayer and giving. Prayer and giving. Shh, 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 shh. We are praying. Hey, we're talking, guys. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. We're talking. Can't do that. Can't hear more than one voice one time. That's confusion. Remember, it's praying and giving. That's. Shh, 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 shh. Helen. Helen. I'm talking. It's praying and giving. Praying and giving. That's all go through the Bible. That's all through the Bible. And that's what we are doing today. Not just giving an offering, but praying over you. And not only praying over your finances, your whole life, your health, your family, your business, your problems, your relationships, every area, every area, every area, that you will be blessed in a way you have never been blessed before. Great. Thank you, guys, and God bless you all. Freely, freely, you have received. Freely, freely, again. go in my name, and because you believe, others will. to pay a tithe and offering one time we can put it in the bag one time if you have an offering or a tithe you can put it one time no problem some of you are waiting for the line to get shorter and that's good yeah, you can just sit there until your time comes. That's fine.
Josh turned down the volume a little bit on the keyboard and song, yeah. So the prayers can be heard. Thank you, Jesus. Bless, Lord. Bless, bless, bless. Bless, 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 bless. Jesus, 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 Jesus. If you can't stand for long, move to the front of the line. No problem. If you get tired, if you feel weak, if you can't stand, move to the front of the line. The others behind you will understand. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, 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 yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. To honor you. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, with all my heart. I worship you. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we worship you. All I have within me. I give you praise. I give you praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I give you Thank you, Jesus. I give you my soul. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. This is my desire to honor you. To honor Thank you, Jesus. You. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, with all my heart, Thank I you, worship you. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. All I have me. Lord, we give you praise. I give Jesus, oh Lord, thank you. Lord, I give him my heart. I give him my soul. I live for you, oh Lord. Every breath that I take, and praise and praise and praise every moment I'm away. to 
we thank you, Lord, we thank you. We exalt Lord, we thank you. Thank you. 
strength of my life. You are my strength. Thank you, Jesus. Strength like a Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Strength like a Lord. Thank you, 
Jesus. For it reaches to the highest mountain. We thank you for the blood you shed for us. And it flows to the Lord. The blood that has washed us.
much for being a part of this great service this morning. Thanks to all of you for your participation, for your involvement, for your cooperation, for your very presence here this morning. The Lord willing, tomorrow morning, Good Friday, half past eight, we keep all the times standard so people wouldn't be confused. So tomorrow morning, if you are able to make it, Good Friday service at half past eight, one service. And on Sunday morning, again, Easter Sunday morning, one service, half past eight. If you are able to make it, we'd love to have you. Thank you for filling out your cards. Thank you for committing yourself. I believe with all my heart, this weekend changes Faith Center forever. In finances and in all the other areas of our lives. I believe that most sincerely. We are getting ready to dismiss you. If you have an offering or a tithe that you want to bring that you have not yet brought, the ushers and the ministers are staying here at the altar. Feel free to bring it if that's what you choose to do. Also, they are staying at the altar. If in addition to the prayers that you already had, or maybe you didn't come in the line, but you need prayer, the ministers are here to hear to serve you, to pray with you. Thank you again. Let's stand together, please. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, what an awesome manifestation of your presence. Surely Jesus Christ is alive. And he's in the midst of his church. Speaking to us. Loving us. Counseling us. Guiding us. Comforting us. Blessing us. Renewing our strength. Rebuilding our hope. Lifting us up. Oh Lord, we love you this morning. And we thank you. We pray for our ministers today, Lord. Yes, Lord. These men who have stood on their feet. Yes, Jesus. Lord, we pray for all our ministers, yes, men and women. Yes, Lord. Present and those who are not here today. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We lift them in prayer before you, Lord. Yes, Jesus. Especially our senior pastor. Yes, Jesus. Continue to bless him and hold him in the palm of your hand and order his steps and speak into his life and guide him as he leads us in the way that you would have us to go. Yes. Thank you, Lord, for all our members, those who are here today, those who are not here today, we remember them in prayer. Yes. Wherever they are, Lord, pray your grace will be upon them, that your grace will be upon their family members. Strengthen them and keep them. Lord, for those of our family members who are not yet saved, we lift them before you because what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Yes. What can a man give in exchange for his soul? So our greatest prayer for our loved ones, Lord, is salvation. Yes. Your wonderful salvation. Yes. So rich and so free. Lord, now thank you for covering us. Thank you for going with us. Yes. Thank you for protecting and preserving and prospering us. In all we put our hands to do the rest of this weekend and for the rest of our days. We praise you and we bless you. In Jesus' holy name and all his believers said amen. Amen. Good morning and God bless you again.